the dead of winter envelops the world in silence. The plover, thought of as a summer bird. Cracks the silence. Our story begins with this character. This river scene is the same as any other autumn. It is a time of year when food is abundant and everything is peaceful. One might think a long neck leaves these birds vulnerable. But when it comes to hunting, it can actually be a tremendous asset. Long legs also aid in hunting. In order to hunt fast moving fish, the hunter needs resilience and a quick response. Despite the length of their necks, the neck of the large egret and gray heron contain just seven bones, like a human's. The gray heron's sharp bill works like a harpoon. But its piercing function can also create trouble. It's an occupational hazard when one's eating utensil doubles as a blade. The heron is now a bit more careful. At this time of year, the flathead mullet comes to this river to lay their eggs. Hovering over a hundred meters high, this bird is eyeing the movement of the flathead mullets in the stream. The moment the mullets rise above the surface, this bird of prey plunges down and snatches up the fish with its talons. As water bubbles rise to the surface, the fish is plucked up to the sky. The wingspan of this bird is 1.8 meters. It is the celebrated fish hunter, the osprey. It boasts a huge catch this time. In order to reduce wind resistance, it adjusts its body shape into a straight line from head to tail. The osprey's talons are key to its hunting prowess. They work much like a fish hook.
it has four long, sharp talons which bend inward. The instant they touch the water surface, they spread out. The osprey's talons are shaped much like the lure of a fishing rod. This lure and hook method of catching fish primarily uses a hook without any bait. This unique fishing method works like this. The angler throws the hook about a meter behind a school of fish. He then quickly snaps the rod back, snagging a fish on the sharp hook, which he then pulls toward him. The osprey similar catch happens in the blink of an eye. But the osprey's hunting style has a success rate of only 30%. We might imagine a slow predator fails in the hunt, but speed is not the only factor for success. The osprey must reduce speed before it hits the water. If it doesn't slow down, the impact of the water surface could kill it. The osprey's ability to control its speed is the key to its success or failure. It repeatedly hovers over the water, passing by again and again, biding its time. It scans the surface of the water with a sharp eye. It must try hard even for a three out of 10 success rate. The osprey varies its hunting methods depending on the situation. Sometimes it must dive into the water to catch fish that are deep below the surface. The osprey weighs about two kilograms. It usually hunts fish weighing about 300 grams, but sometimes it catches fish weighing nearly as much as itself. To hunt fish just below the surface, it must snatch them up as it glides along the water. It always seems to be motivated as if this is its last chance to eat. If it's lucky, it gets two for the price of one. Sometimes, even three fish are on the menu. To the fish, the osprey is a menacing hunter, but to the seagulls, it's simply another bird with fish. Their target is simply the fish that the osprey has caught. The osprey is a migratory visitor here in Korea, except in a few regions where it winters. It doesn't build nests in these parts. Instead, 
it will make a temporary home out of a tree with a wide view. This is not a familiar environment to the osprey. The osprey enjoys a bit of quiet time. But suddenly the peace is shattered. Those annoying magpies have shown up. They are resident here throughout the year. The vagrant osprey is powerless in the face of these permanent residents. The osprey will stay in this region about a month in order to finish the long journey that lies ahead, it must fill its stomach. There's suddenly a fuss over something on the river. Sometimes the simplest way is the best. Like waiting for an apple to fall, these birds simply wait for the fish. This avian neighbor has chosen some easy hunting techniques, but with less than stellar results. In order to catch bigger prey, it will need to exert more effort. Among the various water birds, the seagulls have developed a wide range of hunting skills, their survival rate is accordingly high. Stealing food from others is one of their survival skills. Their only goal is getting fish. To the seagulls, the birds of prey, and even other seagulls, are simply competitors who have fish. Once you grasp the habits of the fish, hunting becomes easier. These yellow feet are outstanding. By instinct, fish tend to hide themselves beneath water-bound plants. This little egret's hunting strategy stems from this knowledge. It shakes its conspicuous yellow feet in the water plant. The fish become alarmed and race to get away. A successful catch is very possible now. Their feet are shaking, but their eyes stay focused. Predators must always stay one step ahead of their prey. This is the key to successful hunting. The most basic aspect of hunting lies in understanding their prey. The days are growing shorter.
When the wind blows in from the north, the white-tailed sea eagle visits the Korean peninsula to spend the winter. It's the hungriest time of the year as they finish their long journey. The cold today cuts like a knife. One might think hunting would be impossible today. This is a young white-tailed sea eagle. These birds left their mother only a short time earlier. Today is its lucky day. But it's quite clumsy at hunting. It's a good thing it doesn't mind eating carrion. This mallard couple is busy filling their stomachs. Winter is a difficult season for them to find food too so the birds snatch up any bit of food they can find. These two adult white-tailed sea eagles are shivering through the cold. The white-tailed sea eagle is a large and powerful bird of prey. It is one meter in length with a wingspan of 2.4 meters. and most consume a great deal each day to maintain its size. It sometimes preys on other birds and mammals, but its usual diet is fish. A white-tailed sea eagle soars upward in the ascending air current. But it is unable to change its direction as fast as other birds of prey do. This is because of its huge size. This is a cornet fish, about 70 centimeters in length. The white-tailed sea eagle is a large bird, so naturally its prey is as well. There are few birds that can fly while carrying a fish that weighs as much as this. As the winter itself fades into the past, the flapping of the seagull's wings grow serene. The water grows warm again. It is a time when those who live on the water again grow active.
it is a busy time for the common kingfisher. This is a common kingfisher couple. The one on the right with the red down bill is the female. The male gets no peace, what with the bossiness of its mate. With its catch firmly in its mouth, the common kingfisher rushes off. Oops, you dropped something. Don't worry, nobody saw that. The world below the water is quite different from what we see above. When light passes through the surface, it bends. This refraction makes fish well below the surface appear as if they're at a much shallower depth. The common kingfisher is aware of this bit of science. But even this skilled hunter can miss its target by less than an inch. The common kingfisher has learned this through considerable trial and error. This fish is a symbol of courtship by the male. The kingfisher couple may need to go diving more frequently from now on. And just what is the first rule of hunting? Don't get caught by your target. Some fish have a viewing angle of up to 270 degrees. They can sense movement from every direction. Ambush. That's the strategy this bird has chosen. This minnow caught by the green-backed heron must not have noticed his attacker's approach. The fish are making their way upstream beyond the cascade. They all know where the food is to be found. But competition is fierce among the birds for this prime feeding spot. A larger egret with a sizable build has taken the best location. Fish must swim upstream beyond the cascade in order to breed. This instinct exposes them to considerable danger.
It is now monsoon season. No one can predict the sudden changes in the weather. A green-backed heron is holding onto his great hunting spot it found. It looks solemn and serious. The egret, formerly in this spot, has left, so the green-backed heron waiting to take it over has jumped at the chance. Nobody knows when or where the fish will spring forward. Green-backed heron's neck and legs are shorter than the egrets, so it puts all its strength into its toes to stretch and catch fish. The rain has finally let up. Because of all the precipitation, the river is overflowing. The green-backed heron has found another hunting spot. It knows it's difficult to hunt from the shore of a roaring river. So it chooses a high tree out of the range of the fish's vision. It takes each step cautiously, as if it were walking a tightrope. Finding sustenance can be as precarious as a high wire act. Now, all it can do is wait. The green-backed heron is a hunter that knows the habits of its prey and how to take advantage of its environment. This is a small rice paddy just below a cliff. A meadow grasshopper drops onto the water. For a small insect like this, surface tension is more of a threat than gravity. But for pond skaters that know how to use surface tension to their advantage, water is their whole world. The struggle doesn't last long.
There is a clear food chain in this small rice paddy. But sometimes the desperation for survival comes through. The duckweed acts as a lifeboat to the grasshopper. It was a close call. He escaped, but only just barely. Nearby, one creature has been watching all this fuss from the very beginning. It's a black-capped kingfisher, a summer bird on the Korean peninsula. Its orange beak and blue feathers present a colorful contrast. It is now mating season. The one with a lizard in its mouth is a male. Right now, it's engaged in courtship, trying to attract the female with food. The black cap kingfisher's hidden hunting skills lie with its long and substantial beak. This time, however, its prey was a bit faster. The black cap kingfisher is omnivorous. It feeds on a variety of food, from aquatic insects to small snakes. Among its favorite foods are frogs and small fish. The black cap kingfisher belongs to the Halcyonidae family. Naturally, it has excellent hunting skills. What method it uses for flying depends on its potential prey. Small fish can be snatched up sliding into the water. But larger prey are caught by poking with its beak. At this time of year, it's hunting primarily for its offspring. Until its young leave the parents, the hunting will go non-stop. There is another creature that possesses different hunting skills from what we've seen so far. It is the brown dipper. Its home is a nest that looks like brown moss. It is a permanent resident of the Korean Peninsula's gorges and low mountains. It is twice as large as a sparrow. The brown dipper's style of hunting is a bit more aggressive. It dives straight into the water. It does not have webbed feet, but this poses no problem at all. This is because its wings function like the fins of a fish. Instead of a fish's scales, its body is covered in waterproof feathers. Before diving, it applies oil from its tail feathers all over its body. Now, it's all set to go after its prey. The brown dipper eats small fish and aquatic insects which it catches while diving in shallow water. 
Its wings flap as if they are the fins of a fish. Underwater insects may be small in size, but they are quite nutritious to these birds. What it is looking for are the larvae of the caddisfly. These larvae build up a tube-shaped nest by using small stones around it. At first glance, this home looks like a leaf or a stone, making it hard to detect. The brown dipper has found its mark. It has discovered one caddisfly larva, but it's stuck in leaves and can't bring its prey up. The difference between the brown dipper and the fish is that the former cannot breathe underwater. It can spend only about 30 seconds below. It dives down again. This time, it has met with success. The caddisfly larva is a difficult food to deal with. But this bird knows how to manage. Sometimes it uses its head to batter the food. Finally, it is able to take a bite. In order to hunt for larger prey, birds must be able to dive deeper and longer. This is a cormorant. Underwater, it is as comfortable and adept as any fish. The cormorant's hunting skills lie with its feet. It has well-developed webbed feet. Ducks and penguins typically have two webs on each foot. The cormorant, however, has three. Webbed feet act as a kind of propeller, allowing birds to swim at high speed underwater. They also function as a rudder. The cormorant can dive as deep as 45 meters. When diving to such depths, it pulls its wings close to its body to reduce resistance. The cormorant can even catch the Chinese muddy loach that resides at the water's bottom. But the Chinese muddy loach is sleek and strong, making it tough to catch. The cormorant's feet are located farther back than other birds. That's another secret to their great speed underwater.
It is wiggly and wriggly. It's proving quite difficult to hold on to. Hunting skills are important, but it is persistence that eventually means the difference between success and failure. The cormorant forgoes waterproof feathers in order to dive deeper. Without them, it reduces buoyancy. That means there's work to do after the underwater hunt. It is drying its wet feathers in the sun. When it's hot, it vibrates the area just below its bill. That helps reduce body temperature. The cormorant jumps into the water to find food. It swims instead of flapping. To catch a fish, its hunting strategy is to become a fish. Everything ends here with this fish. Some birds snatch up the fish. Others sneak up on the fish. Some startle the fish. Others move faster than the fish. And some swim underwater like a fish. The birds know and understand their prey. In the fight for survival, they become like their prey. This is the essence of hunting.